everyone who thirsts come to the waters and you who have no money come buy and eat yes come excuse me yes come buy wine and milk without money and without price why do you spend for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance verse 3 should be there for your attention and I will stop here it says incline your ear and come to me and hear excuse me and excuse me incline your ear to uh, incline your ear and come in, um, come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you the sure mercies of David, the sure mercies of David. Um, I want to speak to you this morning from a subject. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Um, I was going to minister this last Sunday, but I wanted to finish and close out um, the message uh, series. The kingdom of God is like, and I believe God has placed on my heart a series of messages um, not so much a message series, but there are different messages that God has placed on my heart that's really not a series, but something that is really going to deal uh, with your soul, to deal with your soul. Uh, right now, I feel like the pandemic has only magnified uh, the the human depravity uh, that is going on with one's soul. And, and the human soul is deprived and it's yearning and searching for something, especially now in this pandemic. When you take away everything, when you when you put a halt to uh, vacations, when you put a halt to uh, certain things that you are accustomed to, and now life has to then, now you have to live with yourself. There are certain things that you're starting to see now with suicide and depression on an all-time high anxiety on a whole time high and I understand because again people's money is being impacted people's livelihoods are being impacted life as we know it I'm unfortunately I will not say that it's going to return back to the same there's going to be some new norms that continue beyond this part of where we are however ladies and gentlemen when I look at uh when I look at not only the righteous but when I look at the unrighteous ladies and gentlemen the Lord has me to take a glimpse and watching in this text ladies and gentlemen we see how sometimes our hearts can be prone to wonder. Yes, while you are a believer, your heart can be prone to wonder. Your heart can be prone to look for things that is outside of the kingdom, already not understanding that what's in the kingdom already satisfies. But do you feel like there's still something that's out there that you necessarily don't feel that Jesus is meeting? And pretty much what that is, because there's certain things you have not allowed Jesus to do in your heart so he can meet the various thing that you need. But then there's other ones that we have. Uh, the unrighteous feels as though with different things that if they spend money on uh, being able to get um, Brazilian butt lifts or getting different things with their chest done and different things uh, far as uh, all of this vanity that we put into various different things, we feel as though that that will help or that will help to go um, alongside of what we need at this very given moment, ladies and gentlemen. And so we spend money in the things and we put money in different places or we spend money so we can have some type of prestige or authority uh, so that we can get into certain places, ladies and gentlemen. And now we find ourselves and now we're in a place where it's though like we're yearning for something and we're yearning for things that necessarily is not quenching the thirst. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are in this text, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you a little bit about the book of Isaiah and the reason why it was written. Ladies and gentlemen, the book of Isaiah is mentioned, uh, uh, is the Old Testament prophet that is mentioned the most in the New Testament. Matter of fact, I would venture to say that Jesus talked more about Isaiah and quoted more from Isaiah than other books, but that's just my opinion. You can read it for yourself, but he quoted him the most because Isaiah had a more open revelation than the rest of the prophets did to what Jesus anointed and his assignment was in the earth. Gee, matter of fact, Isaiah spent time with you picturing, picturing to you that he would be a suffering servant. Matter of fact, the announcement and the decree of the Messiah to come came from Isaiah, that there would be a there would be a child that would be born in Bethlehem. And so Isaiah was privy to see this information that God allowed him to see concerning the future Messiah and what he would do and what he would uh, uh, come to do and accomplish here on the earth. But another reason why the book of Isaiah 
is very interesting to us, ladies and gentlemen, because here in the book of Isaiah, ladies and gentlemen, is that Isaiah is sent to warn the southern region, which is Judah. You had Israel, who were the northern kingdom, and you had Judah, the southern kingdom. And so their brother, their countrymen, their fellow countrymen, ladies and gentlemen, in the north, ladies and gentlemen, had already been conquered by the Assyrians for the same sin that they were about to be conquered by because of idolatry. Uh, it was always feeling like they always wanted uh, the gods of other nations. And they felt like they their God, the God of Israel, they didn't feel like the God of Israel was doing uh, the things that they saw other nations were doing. All right. And so that's what they longed after. They wanted to long after other gods. They were uh, had odd. They, they took on idolatry of other gods besides the God of Israel. And God said it himself in his word that I am. That God said, I am a jealous God. And so they didn't understand that God is about the glory of himself. They didn't understand and they didn't realize how good they have it. Oh, my God. Uh, as compared to other nations, they didn't realize that this God who delivered them and grew them and grew them out of Egypt out in the middle of 400 years of oppression, how they came in small, they left out over a million and left with everything that Egypt had to offer. And so let, let me tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen, if I could take my time, is that sometimes us as in the kingdom or so-called kingdom believers don't realize how good we have it. You don't realize how good we have it to be in this kingdom where, the, where all needs are met. He said, I shall supply all of your needs according According to my riches and glory. That means that this king, ladies and gentlemen, watch me. He has riches and he also has, oh my God, he has said, according to my riches and glory. He has glory and he also has riches. And that means he has an abundance of both things. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And with that, having an abundance of both things, he is not a God. He is not a king that just lets everything go to himself and not give to who is under him. If you believe it, I want you to put in the comment section and say, I hear you, Pastor B. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in this text, and, G and, and Isaiah, ladies and gentlemen, is writing to uh, writing to Judah because this southern kingdom, Judah, is about to is about to commit the same mistake that the oh my God that their northern countrymen, uh, Israel, did. Ladies and gentlemen, can I help you understand this? Ladies and gentlemen, is that they're about to fall into the same mistake because they don't realize how good they have it. You don't realize that when you are true believer of God. I'm talking about, I'm talking to the real ones. I'm not talking to you who have, you profess with your mouth, but your heart is far away from God. I'm talking about to the ones who feel like sometimes you feel like you don't feel completely fulfilled in Christ, that you don't feel like you've completely satisfied in Christ. I'm talking to the ones who say, for instance, that I came into this Christian walk with Jesus and I think there's more that meets the eye. Yes, but guess what? Let Jesus to quench that. Don't try to run to other things and then realize you realize when you step out of the will of God, God, it was better for me to be in the will of God than out of the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, can I actually give it to you in the New Testament? I hear you, Holy Spirit. Jesus actually did, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a parable. This parable, ladies and gentlemen, is of the prodigal son. How do I know this? Because in this prodigal, uh, with this prodigal son, he didn't realize how good he had it under his father's care. The moment he took his money and the moment he took his riches, then he realized, ladies and gentlemen, how bad it was outside of the covering of God. Can I help somebody? in this room can I help you right where you are is that when you get out of the covering God you don't understand how good you had it when God covered you from things seen and unseen how when God covered you and continue to provide provision for you let me help you it is in the covering God the Bible said the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will in the will of God there's a hymn that song that says that excuse me not the Bible <laughs> We can just allude to that. I don't want me to be on the Bible or cliche. All right. <laughs> Let's just make that clear. Amen. All right. So listen, he's here. He's writing to these future exiles, ladies and gentlemen. But in, he's telling them, yes, you are going. You're going, ladies and gentlemen, to go into captivity. Matter of fact, the Babylons will be the ones to conquer Judah. Uh, it's going to happen because uh, uh, let me give it to you. Isaiah chapter one. Can you put it on the screen? <laughs> I'm going old school with paper notes today. Amen. <laughs> All right. Can you put it on the screen for me? Isaiah uh, chapter one.
All right, Isaiah chapter 1 says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ex, excuse me, the ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know my people do not consider. All right. Verse four, alas, sinful nation, a people. What's that say? Oh, a people laden with iniquity, a uh, broad of evildoers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. All right. And so what they're what what Isaiah is saying, what excuse me, what God is saying to Isaiah to tell to them that they have backslidden. They have turned their backs against them. They have uh, uh, they have turned their backs against them, uh, against God. They have rebelled. They've been in a place of rebellion, not not willing and 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 not receiving the or 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 seeking the provision outside of the kingdom to other gods. And so that's where they are right now. They are in a place right Right now uh, that they have forsaken their God, they have forsaken the God of Israel, they have forsaken the God of the Bible, and now they're you know going to other places. And so because of that, God said, I've now had to turn my anger on them. And the same way that the uh, Assyrians took over Israel will be the same way that the Babylonians will take over Judah. So that's the first 40 books of Isaiah about warnings. Warning, letting him know of the coming judgment. But God does not always do that without giving some type of comfort along the way. Then we get in from the verses from chapter 40 through verse uh, through uh, through chapter 40 through chapter 66, which gives you a glimpse of the messianic kingdom to come. That give you glimpses of the future Messiah that is to walk the earth. To give you glimpses of what he's going to do and glimpses of what he's going to go through. Isaiah 53 tells us that about his suffering. Here we here we have it here. So he goes from suffering. Then now here in Isaiah 55, ladies and gentlemen, where I want to get our attention to here in this text. Now, Isaiah is giving comfort and encouragement for its future. Watch me for his for the future uh, provision and the grace that the kingdom has to offer through the suffering servant. <laughs> So you can't get to this part without him first suffering. Oh, my God. In Isaiah 53. Here in Isaiah 55, ladies and gentlemen, he first comes off and says, Ho! In other words, he's trying, Isaiah, uh, the prophet Isaiah is saying, Hey, wait a minute. It's a loud shout that he does. This a loud shout with an exclamation mark that he does here, ladies and gentlemen, that really shows and points to the urgency of this message that he has to say. It points to the urgency, ladies and gentlemen, and the importance of what, what Isaiah has to say to the people of Judah. It's speaking that, hey, I need everybody's attention. He, this loud shout that he does is calling people to attention. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on this YouTube live to call you into attention, to say, hey, hey, hey. Hey, I got an important information for you this morning. I got some important information for you uh, uh, right now. Specifically, I'm calling you into attention. And he's saying, listen, uh, uh, th and listen. So he gives this important information. He says, hey, I got an invitation. Listen, this is an invitation that he's about to give out. Listen, anytime you're trying to invite somebody and get a real pe and get some people to come to wherever you are, you want to get people's attention. So he calls them to alert and say, hey, I have an invitation for you. There is an invitation for you and the invitation is open to everybody. All right. So the invitation is open. Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, this reminds me of the parable of the banquet feast uh, in the New Testament. Ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus talks about how 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 he would invite, I will go out and invite everybody to the table. Parable of the wedding feast, how everybody would be what, 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 open to come to the banquet, but only a few accepted the invitation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here in Isaiah 55, he's saying, listen, it's open to everybody. But there's a specific person that's going to accept his invitation. He's saying everyone who is thirsty. 
Hallelujah. Everyone who is thirsty. And then he says, ladies and gentlemen, he says, so you are thirsty. I want you to come to the waters. All right. All right. So so you so so let's deal with this first part here when it comes down to uh, being thirsty, ladies and gentlemen, this thirsty soul that we have here. Let's break this down. What does it mean? It means to those whose souls are like a desert, dry and barren, eagerly seeking and yearning to have their thirst quenched. Uh, Let's let's deal with this. Uh, John chapter four, verse 10. John chapter 4, verse 10. Can you go there for me? Matter of fact, I will take my fingers to do the walking. John chapter 4, verse 10. John chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Let me tell you what this is briefly. This is when Jesus talks to this Samaritan woman at the well. This is the Samaritan woman that he meets at the well. He asks him, asks her, excuse me, to give him a drink. The, 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 the girl looked at him like, who in the world you think you are? And then Jesus said, if you would have known who was asking you this, hallelujah, if you would have known that the gift of God, that he, matter of fact, is the gift, all right? <laughs> and then he was like, who it is that says to give me a drink, you would have asked and he would have given you living water. That means water that does not run out. Something that it goes beyond your physical need that really reaches a human need, the, the human soul that really is thirsty and longing for something. He said that right there is what I'm coming to give is a living water that never runs out. It's a living water that never runs out, ladies and gentlemen. It is a water that goes beyond your physical need for physical water, that goes beyond that and hits the spiritual need that you have to, for your soul to be quenched. <laughs> All right, John chapter 7. Let's continue to paint the picture here. John chapter 7, John chapter 7, verse 37. It says, it says it this way, verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast away. Let me make sure that's the right one. No, in the wrong one. That's 637. All right, I got it. On the last day, thank you. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He said, let him come to me. If anyone thirsts, what Jesus is saying is that no one's going to come to him if they're not truly thirsty. If you are not truly thirsty, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't realize your need or your need for my God, your need for your thirst to be quenched, you will never come to him. Because watch me, because if you're really thirsty, when you try the other things for that to quench your thirst, you will not, you will feel still empty from those things. Oh, my God. You'll still feel empty from those things. And what Jesus is saying that, hey, come to me. I am the living water. That's what he says. Verse 38. Let's go. Verse 38. He said, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So not only watch me, not when you receive this living water, then guess what? The living water then comes on the reside in you. And he said, out of your belly shall flow. Oh, my God. Out of your belly belly shall flow rivers of living water so that people can come and drink from the same, oh, my God, from the same well, watch me, that you've drink from. (laughs) Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of you shall flow, oh, my God, the ability to produce. Oh, my God. The ability to water other seeds shall come out of you. Because your thirst has been quenched. Oh, my God. Help me in here. Not only does he say, not only does he say that he says, come to the waters, those who are thirsty. Right here, hear, hear me. But he says, come. And he said, and you, verse, Isaiah 55, verse 1, it says, and you who have no money. 
Okay, I'm about to mess up with somebody. He said, hidden you who have no money. In other words, he's saying those who are poverty stricken. I know some of you saying, Brandon, I'm not poor, but let me help you understand that you're spiritually deprived. You're spiritually, oh my God, in a place that is impoverished, that is in distress, that is in desperate need for your hunger to be met. Oh my God, help me in this room. When you don't have any money, you can't purchase milk. You can't purchase. That's why he says, come and buy and eat. Oh, my God. In Isaiah 50, 55, verse 1. And so he's talking to those whose souls who are poverty, poverty stricken, utterly famished. That you are famished, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care how much money you think you have. And it's great to have money. It is great because it can solve a lot of things, but it can't solve the human soul. Oh, my God, help me in this room. Money cannot solve the, 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 the oh, my God, your poverty and stricken state of your human soul. The human soul is longing and yearning for something that will quench his thirst and quench his hunger. Oh, my God, help me, help me, help me. He, he's saying right here, he's saying utterly famished and unable to find anything that will satisfy. You have tried to, you have tried to buy this to help satisfy you. You've tried to buy that. You've tried to join that club to satisfy you. You tried to get buddy-buddy with this person and that person. You tried this relationship, that relationship. You've tried alcohol. You've tried all of the, the cannabis and all of that stuff like that. And yet you're, oh, my God, that's that's why you keep going after it because you're chasing something that a momentary high cannot really solve. Oh my God, help me in this room. I don't care what you say. It does not solve your need, the human need for your, oh my God, for your soul to be finally, oh my God, to be finally feel like it's fulfilled. Let me tell you, there's certain food spots I don't go to because I know I'm not going to get full. Woo! Oh, my. There's certain places I don't go to because I know I'm not going to get nothing there. Oh, my God. Help me now. There, you already know there's certain places that you know that when you go there, I better eat before I get there. Because I know when I get there, I'm not going to be full. There's nothing that's going to fool me up inside. I'm going to leave. I got there hungry. I'm going to leave hungry. But the reality is Jesus said when you sit at this table, oh, my God, when you sit at this table, your need, oh, your hunger will be met at this table and you will never have to leave any and go to any other table anymore this is how good you have it in the kingdom Oh my God, oh my goodness, let me tell you something, oh my God, let me tell you something, the world and what the world have to, oh my God, the allurement of the world and what it has to offer is fleeting hallelujah, it's fleeting, it's momentary passing away, but he said, listen, this word right here, I am alright, alright, let me give you Matthew 5, verse 3. I'm coming to a close. Matthew 5, verse 3. Are you satisfied? That's my question to you. That's my question to you. Are you satisfied? Are you really satisfied? Are you, are you, are you satisfied? Because let me tell you something. If you're in Christ, you ought to be satisfied. Oh, my God. Uh, the Bible says when you taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, my God. I, I mean, I, have you really tasted and seen the goodness of God? Because it is the goodness of God that really compels you. It is the goodness of God that keeps you. It is the goodness of God that keeps you wanting more of him. It is the goodness of God that satisfies one's soul. All right, here he is. He cannot, cannot give you what Jesus said in Matthew 5, uh, 5, verse 3. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Watch me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He said, blessed is the poor in spirit. He's not, he's not saying who's physically poor. He's saying who's spiritually impoverished. He's saying they shall be filled, ladies and gentlemen. All right, John 6. John 6. This is really old school. I'm going through, flipping through my Bibles. This is a trusty busty. Hey, let me hear you. John chapter 6, verse 35. John chapter 6, verse 35. It says it like this. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Hear me. Never means never. 
Never means never. When I look in the Greek, it still means the same thing. When I look in the Hebrew, it still means the same thing. It said you'll never go hungry. You'll never thirst again, ladies and gentlemen. The truth of the matter is, is that these saying a promise, the promise and the provision of the kingdom of God is that those who come into the kingdom will never thirst and they will never go hungry. My question is, the reason why you may not feel satisfied with Christ is because there's something in your flesh that is still not submitted. That's what I'm trying to show us. That's what we need to crucify today to the cross. It's crucify that need to feel like I don't have everything I need in him. To feel like doing things outside of him is going to get you, oh my God, a lot further than doing things in him. (laughs) Jesus dispelled that myth right there. He said, apart from me, come on and preach now. You can do nothing. Hallelujah. Apart from him, you can do nothing. Can I go some more? It says it like this, ladies and gentlemen, in verse two, he says, he says, yes, come, excuse me, verse one, yes, come and buy wine and milk without money, without price. He's saying, listen, money is not going to solve it. He said, "Ah, money is not going to solve it. The way you come into this thing, ladies and gentlemen, is through faith. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. It is the grace of God that provides this. You don't got to pay for it. Oh, my God. It don't cost you anything besides believing with your mouth and also believing in your confession with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord that's how you receive this but here we go verse 2 is what really caught my attention verse 2 is really what caught my attention it it didn't make sense Uh, it it was like wow this is crazy verse 2 says he this is the real good question he says why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy My question to you is why you put money in places that are not satisfying? Why do you put investment in things that are not satisfying? Why do you waste time on things that will not satisfy? Why do you waste time with people that are not going to satisfy? Why are you wasting time with things, places, and other things that will not satisfy like Christ is going to satisfy? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is by faith that you're going to receive this, that you don't have to pay for it. You have to just believe by faith, ladies and gentlemen, and hold on to your faith. And that's why you can not get into a place of wrestling with your flesh that feels like there's something more outside of the provision of the king there is nothing outside of the kingdom that's for you and he's saying why do you do that why do you constantly do that why are you wasting time That's my thing to you. Are you satisfied? Ask yourself the real question. What are you satisfied with? Because are you doing the things that is it really bringing satisfaction? Is it really bringing fulfillment? This pandemic has forced you to really sit down and really observe and really evaluate your life to say, wait a minute, was what I doing before, was that really giving me fulfillment? Because guess what? I wouldn't be so miserable because of where I'm at right now if it was. My God. Come on. I wanted somebody has to tell the truth to themselves and come the very fact of the matter is is that am I looking for something outside of the king that I don't feel like he can give me in here that's what Isaiah said why do you do this why do you spend money why are you doing this stuff that has no all right all right John first John chapter 2 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Let me go there really quickly here. Let me go there really quickly. I'm coming to a close. I promise you, I'm in my time. 1 John chapter uh, chapter 2. All right, here we go. Here we go. Give me one second. Are you still with me out there? Say me, I hear you. I hear you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hear me, he's in verse 17, and the world is passed 
passing away, the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does, oh my God, he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God will abide forever. Hear me. This is what they're not telling you. The world is in its lust, the pride, oh my God, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all of that, ladies and gentlemen, is fall, falling away. It's passing away. But he's saying those who do the will of God will abide forever. Hear me, hear me. Worldly pressures and activities, immoral and illicit sexual behavior, married, uh, material po uh, possessions, fleeting and, and, and worldly adventures, ladies and gentlemen, and acquiring or buying position, ladies and gentlemen, is not going to deal with your human need. The human need of the soul. People are trying to take themselves out of here. It's because their soul is not well. Ah. Oh, my God. Their soul is not well. Therapy is great. I've been an advocate for it. But I refuse to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that there's more power in therapy than it is in abiding in Jesus. I, I refuse to tell you that. Reading self-help books is great. But I'm not going to tell you that this bread right here is less powerful than what you'll read in a book from an author. A man made one at that. Oh, my God. Listen, I love essential water. But I'm not going to tell you that's better than the water that Jesus has. I'm just not going to tell you that. The enemy has things to offer, but what God has to offer is not only, not, only, not only greater than what he can offer, but it's eternal. Jesus, help me in here. The enemy can't give you nothing that is eternal. Oh my God. The enemy, oh, my God, the way he lures you in on stuff that is fading away. Oh, my God. That will not have any value in where you're going. Oh, my God. Help me in this room. But, oh, my God, my works that I do here, God, help me, will follow me. Not just, we will not die with me, but it will follow me into eternity. Oh, y'all not ready for me. Ah, it will follow me to eternity. And the reason why I know it will turn, oh, my God, because he says, store up. Oh my God, your treasures in heaven. So as I'm working here, there's things that's being stored up there that I'm going to inherit and that I'm going to get there that I can't get here. Oh my God. Oh my God. And that's what satisfies me. Jesus is the bread that gives hunger. Oh my God. That gives those who are hungry and feeds them so their hunger will be quenched. So their thirst can be quenched. And oh my God, help me. And, and so here's what he does. And I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm, I'm out of here. He says, hear me. He said, verse three, listen to me carefully. Hear me, let me tell you something. Your soul depends on it. Oh my God, your life depends on it. Why is this man preaching as hard as he is? Because your life depends on it. Your soul depends on it. Your soul needs to be, needs to know that you can't go and look for things that is outside of the provision and the grace of the king of, oh my God, of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's saying, listen careful, carefully to me and eat what is good. Ask, oh my God, how can they hear? Come on. Did he say, how can they hear without a life coach? Oh my God. Did he tell me, oh my God, how can he hear with your Instagram influencer? No, he said, how can they hear? Oh my God. Unless they have a preacher. Oh my God, I praise you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as you eat and as you digest of the word of God, your spirit begins to grow and builds up your faith that he even in the midst of the pandemic, you know that God is good and his mercy, oh my God, oh my God, endures from generation to generation. Hallelujah. You can take your counterfeit mess. You can take that counterfeit Christianity that ain't going to satisfy you. But you can take the real meat of the word and you can grow and you can stand strong even in the midst. 
or what you got going on. Hallelujah. 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 I feel my help now. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, he says, listen to me. And he said, listen carefully. Oh, my God, it's the same thing that Jesus told them when he said about the kingdom of God. He said, oh, my God, oh, my God. He told them really quick. He said, oh, my goodness, help me, God. Give me the verse. Give me the verse. He said, he said, he said he that has an ear. God, I thank you. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I say he that has an ear on this YouTube live. Let him hear so your soul can live. Jesus said, my word brings life. Oh, my God. Help me in here. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I care that you have made life and have it more abundantly. If you believe it, put in that comment section and shout hallelujah. Oh, my God. He says, listen carefully to me. And he says, eat. I'll give you one last thing. <laughs> I'm going to give you a last thing. He says, not only this. He said, listen, because your life depends on it. But hear me and let your soul delight. Oh, my God. That's my encouragement for you. <laughs> I said, let your soul delight. <laughs> Can I give you the, oh, my God, let me hear. I hear you, David. <laughs> Psalm 37, verse 4. <laughs> delight yourself in the Lord. Come on in here. <laughs> and he shall give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> He said to delight yourself in the Lord. He said he shall give you the desires of your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, are you satisfied? That's my question to you. I want you to think about that long and hard this week. Are you satisfied in the one that can satisfy you? Or are you still going for after things that are fleeting and that are passing away? But let me tell you something. The good news that you have today, ladies and gentlemen, is that you don't have to hunger anymore. The good news is that you don't have to thirst anymore because the bread of life is here. The one that goes Oh my God, the living water is here. And I tell you, you'll never thirst again. I took a drink, oh my God, almost the same weekend. Hallelujah. Oh my God, oh my goodness. At the age of eight years old, it was in the month of August, like this year. Oh my God, like this month. Around the same time, at a sunrise service at 745. And that moment, I took a drink and I never looked back. So, oh my God, I guarantee you that not this morning that when you take a drink, when you really taste and see the goodness of God, you'll never look back. You'll never turn to what doesn't satisfy anymore. Oh, my God. And so, my question to you is what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm talking to the righteous and the unrighteous. I'm talking to those who are righteous and think that they got to look for something outside. Don't realize how good they have it. Them looking to those who are unrighteous and saying, Pastor, I don't, I don't know about what you're talking about, but it sounds ple. Oh my God, it sounds good. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you, you can come and get some. Hallelujah. You can come get some. Hallelujah. You can come and get this drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can come and get it. And I'm telling you now, you'll never look back. You'll never look back. Because I'm satisfied with Jesus. And that has to be your real heart's cry. And if there's areas that you're not, there has to be a level of submission. In the name of Jesus. If you're not satisfied, I'll offer you Jesus. If you're not satisfied, I'll offer you a chance to drink of the well. <laughs> that will never run dry. <laughs> I give you a chance to come to the table and eat of this bread. And I promise you'll never go hungry. I give you a chance. <laughs>